Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I say to whatever, whatever, whatever. Hello, my dear friend. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. It's me, Bishop John R. Stevenson, <clears throat> here to welcome you to another edition of the Shepherds of the Shepherd's Heart. Let's pray together. God, you are so wonderful to us. And first of all, we want to recognize you as the sovereign and the holiest God that you are, the magistrate that you are. God, we know that you are God, and it's no surprise to us. But just in case there's somebody under the sound of my voice, don't know you as the true and living God. Reveal yourself to them through this broadcast, Father, in the name of Jesus. Make yourself known to them, just like you made yourself known to me and others, Father. Make yourself known <clears throat> to them. Give them their burning bush experience. Give them their Damascus Road experience, Father, in the name of Jesus. The woman at the well, give them their, their well experience today. Reveal yourself to them like only you can, God. They need to know the true and living and living God. And only you can reveal them to us, just like the scripture says. You know, we can't come to Jesus unless you draw us. And we can't come to you unless the, the son draw us. We can't know you unless you're revealed to us. So we need revelation and we thank you for revelation. Thank you for giving us eyes to see in the spirit as well as the natural. Ears to hear in the spirit as well as the natural. Thank you so very much for giving us everything that pertained to life and godliness. We thank you, God, that you've already told us that we, we have to grow in statue and in favor with God and with man. So we thank you so very, very much for making things plain for us, for making things clear for us. The Bible said it's impossible for the natural man to understand spiritual things. They cannot and will not be able to. So God, you have to give revelation. So I pray now for everybody that's under the sound of my voice <clears throat> that when this broadcast is over, they will have a newfound revelation of who the Lord Jesus Christ is. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the anointing that rests upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. I give you glory and I give you praise for everything that's going to transpire in this broadcast today. Touch each and every person in a special way. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Friend, it's so good to be in your presence. It's so good to be spending time with you. Thank you for tuning in to the shepherd's heart. I do it for you, friend, and I can't do it without you. Thank you so very, very much for lending me your ear. We still dealing with I will trust in thee. I know we've been dealing with it all year, but, but it's necessary. If we're going to benefit from this new season that we're in, we have to make sure that we locate our trust we find out where we have placed our trust. We have to find out, friend. You don't want to wait till it's too late to realize that you've been believing and trusting in the wrong thing, the wrong person, that your faith is in the wrong place. You have to locate it, friend. You have to mark the places. We was looking, <clears throat> we looked in Psalms 40 and 4, and it said, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. We dealt with that word maketh. We dealt with that word. And there's some powerful, powerful, powerful uh, words in the definition of that word, uh, sum sim. There's some powerful, powerful words. And one of the words is commit. One of the words is commit. And this is what the Holy Spirit was saying to me to say to you. Trusting God has to be a commitment. Trusting God, friend, has to be a commitment. You have to commit. You have to be committed to trusting God. That has to be your solemn commitment. Oh man. You have to be committed to trusting him. That means friend, uh, that, that means you're not going to, you're not going to share your trust. One minute I'm going to trust the Lord and the next minute I'm going to put my trust and faith somewhere else. Because when we're talking about trusting friend, we're talking about being confident. We're talking about being assured and sure of. Uh, so, and we're also talking about hope or expectation. Where have you, where have you designated? <clears throat> what place have you designated to put your hope and expectation? Who is it, friend? Who is it or what is it that you've placed your confidence in? 
It's a daily decision. You have to choose to do it daily. And the other thing, another word in, in the word uh, simsum in, in, in uh, Psalms 40 and 4 is rehearse. You have to rehearse. You have to uh, uh, practice. You have to practice. That's what rehearsal is. It's practice. You have to practice doing that, friend. You have to rehearse. Practice doing that or it don't happen. You have to practice so it becomes a, 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 a regular thing, an ordinary thing, a, a thing without question. You don't have to think about it. See, when things go on, I, I already know. It, it's going to be, oh, Lord. I already know where, my, where I've put my, my trust. I already know where my faith is. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is uh, Philippians 1, 6, and God gave it to me early in my, in my Christian walk. Be confident in this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you is faithful to perform it until the day of Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Be confident in, I'm confident in him. My trust and my faith is in God and God alone, friend, and God alone. Because he knows everything. He know all things, friend. I trust him because he's not a liar. <clears throat> I trust him because he's not a liar. I say I trust him because he's not a liar. Mm-hmm. Now, 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 now this is important that we see this. I want to go to, uh, I want to go to, to, okay, Lord, I'll stay right here. Let's go to Psalm 37. <clears throat> Let's go to Psalms 37, please. Psalms 37, we're moving forward. Psalms 37. We're going to look at verse 3 through 4, okay? <clears throat> 3 through 4. Let's look at this, friend, because this is important. Watch this. Trusting God has to be a commitment. You have to be committed to trusting God. That has to be your solemn commitment. You have to be committed. We're going to deal with the word commit, friend. We're going to deal with what it means to be committed. Watch this. Let's look at the text, though, the first text that we're going to look at it. That is Psalm 37, 3 through 5. Look what it says. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily thou shall be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord. He shall give thee the desires of thine heart. <clears throat> Watch what verse 5 say. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring it to pass. Oh, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> wow, wow, wow. Hear the word of the Lord, friend. Hear the word of the Lord. See, you have to be committed. You, if you're going to benefit from this new season that you're in, you got to be committed to it. You can't be wishy-washy, friend. You can't be lukewarm in this. It can't be part-time. It's all or none. It's all or none. The Lord blessed me with this song called All for God or Nothing at All. Either it's all for God or it's nothing at all. Either, gonna, either you're going to give your best to God or nothing at all. Cain, why is your countenance fallen? If you do right, will you not be accepted? God is not just accepting anything. And God is not going to accept us being part-time, trusting in him part-time. God want a full-time relationship with you or no relationship with you at all. God don't want to share his relationship with you and other gods. You cannot serve two gods. You can't serve God and mammon. You got to choose, friend. Make up your mind. <clears throat> it's a daily choice. It's a daily decision for you to do it. You have to do it all day, every day. You live in the valley of decisions. And you're making decisions all day, every day, whether or not you're going to trust God or something else or somebody else. In the, in the definition of the word make it in, in Psalms 40 and 4, I love it, y'all. I love it because when God began to peel this thing back and show me, I love this. It says you have to name, you have to call, it, it means to call a name, to name it. Where have you, what's the name? <clears throat> what's the name of your trust? What's the name of the thing or the person that you have put your trust and confidence in? Well, a lot of y'all's, and I hate to say it, but a lot of y'all's, here's the name of it, job. Here's the name of it, fame. Here's the name of it, fortune. Here's the name of it, lottery. Here's the name of it, Powerball. 
Here's the name of it, silver and gold, diamonds. This is the name of it. Your name of your God is Gucci and Coach and yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all, all that, the, the, those are the names of your gods, friend. You've named them. You've named them. <clears throat> Watch this, friend. Watch this. Commit thy way. We're in Psalm 37. We're looking at verse 5 now. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. You see, friend, there are a lot of things going on in your life. You're trusting other entities to do things for you and bring things to pass for you when only God can do it because he is the reason why. First of all, he's omniscious. That means he knows everything. Omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent, all places, all the time. <clears throat> I say he's all places all the time. You see, because, because God is God, I need to commit to him, put my trust in him, and he'll bring it to pass. Whatever I need to come to pass, whatever I need to manifest in my life, the Lord will do that if I put my trust in him, if I make him my trust. <clears throat> if I make him my trust, friend, he will bring it to pass. Watch this then. If I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things will be added to me. God will add things to my life. I want to go out here hunting for things, searching for things, looking for things. No, God will bring everything to me, friend. Oh, Lord. Here's what we don't understand about God. God has finished. God don't have to do anything else, friend. Everything God needs to do for you, he's finished. He's finished. Now God is revealing things, wanting to reveal, not trying, wanting to reveal things to you. You just have to want to pay attention so he can. God is wanting to reveal to you all the things that he's already pre-did for you. He pre-purposed, he pre-planned, pre he pre-done things for your friend. And the only way you're going to know what they are, you're going to have to come into a relationship with God so he can show you. <clears throat> In the natural, you can't see it. So you need to come to him so that you can possess the Holy Spirit of God, who is the knower, who knows all things and who gives us revelation. He say, if, listen what it says, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him and he will bring it to pass. I don't care what it is. He will bring it to pass, friend. You need it. You need it done. There's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing impossible for God. God can do everything but fail, friend. He, well, he can't lie either. He can't lie. God want to help you today. Listen, <clears throat> because, because we have to understand. We, we really do. We have to understand. Watch this then. That I have to be committed. Okay, let's look at that then. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. Let's look at that. H here we go then. Here's what it means to be, that word to, to commit means. Here's what it means. It means to trust. Ain't that, ain't that something? The word commit there means to trust. That's amazing that the word commit means to trust. Wow. Okay, watch this now. It means to seek. If I'm going to commit, if I'm committed to something, I'm going to seek after that, continually to seek after that. That's, me, that's showing commitment. I'm going to be constant and consistent in it if I'm committed. That's what committed is. To be diligent, to be constant and consistent. Say that, friend. To be constant and consistent. To be committed in putting my trust in him, I got to be constant and consistent in doing so. <clears throat> that goes back to rehearsing. That goes back to practicing doing so because you're not just going to automatically do it. You have to make yourself do it. You have to commit to it. That means you have to practice it. You got to rehearse it. It also means to run down. Wow, friend, it means to run down. I'm committed to it, so I'm going to run this thing down. The scripture says, faith without works is dead. Right? <clears throat> faith without works is dead. So you can't say you have faith 
in anything if you're not putting feet to it. Commit to be committed to something, I put feet to it. I begin to do things to show myself, to prove to myself that I'm committed to it. So I, I'm constant and consistent in it. Watch what else it means, friend. It means to remove. <clears throat> if I'm committed to something, I remove myself from everything else and everybody else and I stick to that, which I'm committed to. I remove myself from, from everything else and I stick to that one. Okay, watch this then. The word commit also means, it means to pledge. <clears throat> y'all know what pledging is. Y'all pledge to sororities all the time. Mm-hmm. It means that you place, okay, watch this now. It means to pledge or bind, come into an agreement with, with, with a person or an organization to a certain course or policies. Uh, <clears throat> to be governed by certain rules or policies. Watch this now. Watch this now. To be committed means to, to be dedicated to something. Okay. And when you dedicate something to something, you remove it and you, you don't use it for anything else because it's been dedicated. And I only use it <clears throat> for this purpose and nothing else. No, it, it, it can't be used to do anything else. Everything that God had Moses them to put into the tabernacle, it was dedicated to the tabernacle and it couldn't be used for anything else. It had to only be used for the tabernacle, the service of the tabernacle. Watch this now. When God told Moses to go get his people out of, out of Egypt, he said, tell Pharaoh to let my people go so that they can serve me. So that they can serve me. Worship me and me only is what he meant because Pharaoh thought he was God. They had Pharaoh thinking that he was God. And God said, okay, go get my people so that they can serve me and me alone. <clears throat> so they can worship me and me alone. So Pharaoh said, okay, y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead, but you got to leave everything here. And Moses said, no, we can't leave nothing here because we don't know what we're going to need when it comes to serving God. You see, that's committed. That's dedicated. No, we're going to take everything with us because we don't know what God is going to require. You see, friend, when you come to God, you bring everything with you. You don't leave nothing. You bring everything with you because you don't know what God is going to require of you. Watch this now. This is. I love it, friend. I love this. I love this. Watch what else it means because it means <clears throat> to dedicate. It also means to set aside. My goodness. See, I'm setting my trust aside. I'm committing to God. I'm committing to God. <clears throat> I'm committed to God. And I, I just set everything aside. It, it's, it's God and God only. My trust is in God and God only. It means to set aside. It means to dedicate and to set aside. But it also means to designate. Oh, glory to God. To designate means to choose. To designate means to choose. So you have to choose to be committed, friend. You have to choose to be committed to trusting God. And the way you do that, you become constant and consistent in placing, in putting, appointing, imputing your faith and your trust and your confidence in the Lord. <clears throat> watch this now. Watch this because I love this. It means, watch this, it means to transfer. Oh, Lord Jesus. When you commit it, it means to transfer. Again, it's, it's almost like talking about removing something. So transfer means I'm going to take it from where it is and I'm going to put it somewhere else. Transfer. I'm going to take it. I'm going to transit. I'm going to move it from where it is and put it somewhere else. Transfer your trust to the Lord. <clears throat> because where you have your place, your faith and your trust at now, your confidence is, is it's in vain, friend. You, you're really going to be ashamed if you. Do, okay. Watch this now. It means to transfer something to a state or a place, a state of being or a place. That means relocate. Somebody say relocate, relocate your trust. First of all, <clears throat> you got to identify, locate where your trust is and, re and place it somewhere else in the Lord. That's what commitment is. Watch now. But this, and I thought this was, I thought this was wonderful too. 
It means to confine. Oh, Jesus. <clears throat> it means to confine. You know what confinement is, right? Prisoners are confined. Or you, you, you ever heard somebody say you can't put God in a box? To confine means to put something in a place and lock it down in that place to where it never moves. It cannot move. It can only go no farther than that. That's what we're talking about when we say being committed. Lock your, confine your trust in the Lord, friend. And it goes no, once you put it there, friend, once you really put it there, it goes nowhere else. And you don't share your trust, <clears throat> your confidence or place it in nothing or nobody else because it's confined in him. Oh, that's good stuff, friend. Watch this. It also means, we talked about this before, to be committed means to be purposed. You got to do it on purpose, friend. Oh, my, my, my. You have to do it on purpose. It don't just happen. You're not going to wake up one day, friend, and find yourself committed to God. Here's what else the Holy Spirit had me to write. Well, well let's look at some more scripture before I go there. Because it says to trust God, <coughs> trusting, trusting God has to be a commitment. You have to be committed to trusting God. That has to be your solemn commitment. Now, now watch what it says in Psalm 56 and 11. Let's go to Psalm 56 and 11. Let me see what's over here. Psalm 56 and 11. <clears throat> My throat's been a little scratchy. Y'all forgive me for that. Watch what it says uh, uh, in Psalm 56. Psalm 56. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I'm going to start at verse number three. I'm going to start at verse number three but in, in verse, three, verse, verse three and four, and then we're going to go to verse 11. Look what it says. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In other words, I'm, I'm letting you know when fear comes, when something happens and I get, I get dismayed, I'm letting you know I'm going to put my trust, I'm going to place my trust, point my trust in your direction. I've already marked you. I've already called you by name, my trust by name, and that's you. Now watch this because that's important. Verse four, in God will I praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. Y'all see that, friend? You see that? Look what he says. He say, in God, in God will I praise his word. In God I have, I have put my trust. You see, he's designated it, friend. He's telling everyone, he's telling everyone, he said, watch this now, I've imputed I've, I've appointed, I've brought it there, I've named it there. Oh, this is good stuff, friend, this is good stuff. Watch this, and I'm leaving it there. I've set it there and I've placed it there, and I'm leaving it there. Let's go to verse 11, if you don't mind. Look what it says <clears throat> in verse 11. In God have I put my trust. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. <clears throat> I will not be afraid of what man can do. Why? Because I trust God. It's because I trust God, friend. Do you, here's the question, do you trust God? Let's go to Psalm 71. Psalm 71 and 5. <clears throat> Watch this. For thou art, <clears throat> excuse me, for thou art my hope, O God. Thou art my trust from my you. Now watch this now. He said, you are. So he done made him his trust. He said, you are my trust. He's calling it by name. Glory to God, friend. He's calling it by name. He said, listen, to, listen, listen right here, friend. He said in, in verse number 11, let me, in, in, the, in, the, in verse number five, I'm sorry. For thou art my hope, my expectation. You are my hope and my expectation. Oh, Lord God, thou art my trust. He said, you are my trust. He said, you've been that from my youth. So this is, he's just reminding himself. He calls himself reminding God that he is, oh friend, has God become your trust? <clears throat> Have God become your trust, friend? Is he your trust? Oh man, that's powerful. That is so powerful right there, friend. L let's go over here too, because I want to show you something. That right there. Let's go to Psalms 22, if you don't mind. I want to show you something as we get ready to close. Watch this. Because, friend, when you place your trust, when you show people where you've placed your trust, that you've designated, that you've, uh, uh, watch this, that, that you've dedicated 
your trust, <laughs> where you've marked the place where your trust is and God is your trust. <clears throat> when, when other people see that, it will cause other people to want to trust him too. We in Psalm 22, friend, verses 4, 5, and, and 8. Look what it says. Our fathers trusted in thee. Why is it? I'm sorry. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. <clears throat> you see what they say? You, you, we watched our fathers trust you. And you we watched it work on their behalf. We watched you deliver them. <clears throat> they trusted you and you delivered them. Watch this now. You showed yourself trustworthy. <clears throat> Verse number five. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confound. <clears throat> they watched their parents. They watched their fathers trust in God. And so it caused them to trust in God because they, friend, I'm telling you right now, you trust in God, it'll cause somebody else. It'll rub off on somebody else. If you really, if you really put your trust in the Lord, if you really made him your trust, it will cause somebody else, friend, to begin to trust in him. Look what it says in verse eight. He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. <clears throat> seeing that he delighteth in him. Is that not what Psalm 37 said? Those of us who delight ourselves in him, he will give us the desires of our heart, friend. And it says right here, friend, it says, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. So if you delight in him, friend, you make God, your, oh, friend, this is, this is such a good such a good lesson to me. I, I'm telling you, friend, if you make him your trust, name your trust, friend. Locate your trust. You got to care about it. You got to care about it, friend. Nobody's going to care about it but you. Examine yourself right now, friend. Find out where your faith is. Locate where you have placed your trust. <clears throat> Will you do that, friend? It is advantageous to you. It's to your advantage, friend, that you do just that, friend. You got to care. Make it him. You got to care, friend. You got to care. If you don't care, friend, I mean, then, I mean, really, what's the sense if you don't care? You got to care, friend. And then Bishop want to leave you with this. Practice, friend. Practice, practice, practice. You got to commit. Commit to trusting God, friend. Practice doing it. And I promise you, friend, if you do that, your world is going to change. Your life is going to change. We're in a new season. God wants you to benefit from the new season. The word plethora just came in my, in my, in my spirit. <clears throat> a plethora of experiences more than one. A lot of experiences. God wants you to experience so much, friend. Bishop got to go. I love you and I thank you so much for giving me space in your life. Take what God then said to your friend. Ponder it in your heart. Let the Holy Spirit expound on it for you. Thank you for praying for me. Thank you for praying for KPLE. Thank you for remembering them in your giving. Until next time, friend, may God bless you. May God keep you is my sincere prayer for you. Bye-bye, dear friend. Bye-bye. Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it, Lord, whatever you want me to do. I said, whatever, whatever, whatever.